Hello and welcome to Completely Electrical STEM Show. This video, I'm just going to go through some kind of classic science questions from level two and level three. It's going to be kind of winged, I think. I haven't looked at the questions really, I've just literally copied and pasted them onto a new document. And I wanted that on purpose because I wanted to see if my thought process came out on the video. Um, just so you can see how I tackle problems, really. I think it's important that you know how to confront a problem. Uh, I see kids today, they, they just want the answer. And that's fair enough, but you need to know how to get there. <laughs> and just, you know, looking for shortcuts sometimes is not the best way. So let's have a look at the first question and see how we get on. So the first question is about transformers. And it says, using the transformer formula and the information provided, complete the missing information. Show all your calculations and steps. And we've got this picture here, the you know, classic transformer diagram type. We've got the primary side, we've got the secondary side. So on this side, we're going to have a number of turns, a primary current, a primary voltage, and also power going through the transformer. It's important to note that the power on this side will be the same as the power on this side. And the reason is because we're not taking into consideration any losses. So this formula is very conceptual. It's not very real world, but you know, kind of an advantage to us really, because it makes it a lot simpler. So what do we know? What do we not know? We've been given the number of turns on the primary and the secondary, so from that we could work out a ratio. We know the power, and as we said, that's the same going in, that's the same going out, so we can use that to calculate some parameters in a bit. We know the primary voltage, but what we don't know is the primary current, the secondary current, or the secondary voltage. Hmm, okay, so I've drawn it on the board, um, and this is how it's kind of set up really. We've got a load pulling the power through the transformer. We know our primary voltage, that was 210 volts. Uh, this is AC, obviously, because it's a transformer. Uh, we don't know our primary current or our secondary current or our secondary voltage so let's start you know there's a couple of ways we can do this actually i said earlier we had um the stuff we need to make a ratio we've got the primary so annoying <laughs> my camera's just taking random pictures stop we we've got the primary turns and the secondary turns so i'm going to start there and just get that ratio so we sort of know To get the ratio, that's what I'm going to do. And it comes from the transformer formula that they mentioned um, in the question, which I'll extend and complete. So it'll be primary voltage over secondary voltage is equal to primary turns over secondary turns. And that is also equal to secondary current divided by primary current. Now note that we got primary over secondary, primary over secondary, and then for the current it's flipped. It's secondary over primary. Why? Well it needs to conserve the power. So this is pulling the power it needs from the generator, you know, downstream somewhere. So this will just you know, if the voltage goes up, it has to mean that the current must come down to conserve that power. And, you know, you can look in this sort of diagram, we, we can see this physically, you know. This is almost certainly a step down transformer because we've got the number of turns. So we've got 23 on the primary side and nine turns on the secondary side. So the voltage will be coming down because these 
relationships here and so. And you know, think of it as a physical thing. Here, we've got a big distance between the positive side, if you like, and the negative side. You know, it's AC, so it's not quite positive and negative, but this is our potential difference. Big potential difference, big voltage. Come down here, small difference, smaller voltage. And then think about the current. This has got lots of space to spread out, so it's less intense. But then when it's down here, it's been compressed into this small space. So it's more intense. So the voltage comes down, but the intensity of the current is going to increase. That's a very conceptual way of transformers, really. That's, in a nutshell, how they work. So let's put some numbers into this and work out a ratio because we can just get one number here and then we can use that to find out the other values and I'll show you what I mean. So put in that one, that was 23 and this one is 9. 23 divided by 9 is an annoying fraction but we've got 2. Um, I could round this up to 2.6. It's 2.5, 6. But we round it up to 2.6. And we can put that in the equation here. As that. So, next. Well, we know that primary voltage here, that was 210. So let's put that in place. And now we're in a position where we could get this secondary voltage. Incidentally, with these equations, you're only really tackling, you know, you can only get so much out of it. So in this instance, we're not really using that bit. And because they're just three equal things, you can, you can remove the two that you're not using. Now we need to kind of transpose this to get our secondary voltage. So I'm going to I want to isolate Vs, but I need to get it upstairs first, so I'm going to multiply it by itself to cancel out this side. I've unbalanced the equation, so I'm going to copy what I did this side, and then I can cancel. Uh, but we're not there yet, because I need to isolate Vs, which means getting rid of this 2.6. So I'm just going to rewrite it, so it's a bit clearer what I'm going to do next. Now I need to get rid of that 2.6. So to remove something from one side of the equation, you need to do the opposite function by itself. It's being multiplied, so I'm going to divide it by 2.6. I've unbalanced the equation, I must copy it, and then I'm allowed to cancel because 2.6 divided by 2.6 is 1, and 1 times Vs is Vs, so we can get rid of that. So now we have a way of working out our secondary voltage. It's 210 divided by 2.6. Now there's more than one way of getting there. We could have used that um, VA value, the power, and we could have divided it by the primary voltage, and then we got the primary current, and then we could use that equation again in another way. So there's always one, more than one way to kind of skin a cat, if you like. I don't really like that term. Pretty gruesome. Um, but yeah, 210 divided by 2.6 is 80.77 volts. Let's put it in. 80.7 volts. Ah, so we've got our VS, that's good. So I'm just going to list what we've got up here, I think, because that's always good to keep check of what you've got and what you haven't got. 80.7 volts. You could be more accurate here, of course you could. Uh, we know the number of primary turns was 23 and the secondary was a 9. So now we're on to secondary current and primary current. Prefixes to get told off on my boss for not doing that right. So, where can we go? Well, 
we could play with this formula again, but I think I'll use the power to get the rest of this. Let's do that. So I said the power conserves all the way through, and just remember that we have got um, a power equation. I'm going to use the simplified version here, which is simply volts times current. Uh, if there was a power factor, then that would have to be included as well, but as I say, we'll keep it simple now. So if I know the voltage and I know the power, then I should be able to get the current, and that's true for both sides. So let's go ahead and have a go at that. We know the power that was given to us as 2.3 kVA, uh, or 2,300 VA. And if we tackle the primary side first, so we're putting our primary voltage of 210, and then we need to isolate current. So we just need to get rid of this 210. So to get rid of it, we do the opposite function by itself. Divide by 210. Copy at this side. And then we can cancel. And we have an equation to work out our primary current. So let's do that. 2300 divided by 210. 10.95 amps. Okay, now we can do exactly the same thing for the secondary side, because we've got the voltage there. We know the power is going to be the same, so we've got 2.3 kVA going in, 2.3 kVA going out, minus losses. But we're not dealing with the losses, so here we are. Let's do the same thing then for the other side, so 2300. A different voltage now because we're working out secondary side so it's 80.7 times our secondary current and the same steps apply here really so we need to divide out this voltage get it out over on this side cancel it that side to leave secondary isolated secondary current isolated so opposite function by itself 80.7 Copy at this side, 80.7, and then we can cancel. So, our secondary current will be 2300 divided by 80.7. 28.5 amps. So, let's have a look at this and see if it makes sense for transformers, because you've it's really important to sort of go back over your numbers and see if it actually makes sense. We know that if the voltage comes down, the current's going to go up. Um, we, you know, we need to just check to see if that's happening. So the number of turns was 23, and the secondary was nine. So we said it was probably going to be a step down transformer, and these voltages are stepping down, and that would mean that the current would have to come up. Uh, we worked out the current in the primary to be 10.95 and in the secondary it's gone up to 28.5. So all of those kind of check out, they all work, that's what we want. Uh, I think I'm going to leave it there really. As I say, in the real world, you know, there's a lot more stuff to consider with transformers. Um, you know, this would have resistance in and depending on how well these are magnetically coupled that you know they'll transfer a little bit different most transformers are pretty efficient like 98 99 percent but they get hot you know we get losses just like everything else um, and nothing's perfect we aim for perfection we get good that's the way it works so there we go let's just sum up those values also when you're finishing your question, make sure you've got your units in. Oh, drives me mad. I'm guilty of it myself when I'm in a rush, but for an exam, I'd be very particular about that. It's, you know, if you're doing this, let's say you're doing this for a real job, and you're designing a transformer and you don't put units in, 
somebody might take that design and, and make a really big mistake and that's on you really because you haven't conveyed your information properly. Detail is everything in engineering. So many stories about, you know, little tiny errors here that caused millions of pounds of uh, damage or delays. Uh, converting units, oh my god, uh, SI units are the way forward, come on America. <laughs> it's, yeah, there's so many errors to be made converting properly and, and details everything, that's the point. Okay, well, that's that question done. I don't think it asked for anything else, did it? Show all your calculations and step. Well, I did, but I've rubbed it off. Oh, I should have kept my workings. Damn. Top tip for an exam. Workings are everything, because if I'm assessing your exam paper and I can't see a coherent, kind of knowledgeable, step-by-step -step approach, you might lose marks, you know, it means that you're just stabbing in the dark really and guessing probably. Um, and then, you know, we can't do that. Obviously in the real world you'd look it up, but no. Nah. You need some knowledge for the exam and it's a kind of benchmark, that's the point of an exam. It's drawing a line under your knowledge and proving that you can do it on your own. So that was question one done. Join me next time for question two. See ya.